Hello everyone. Today we continue to talk about our flow types. And uh, last time we discussed about four different flow uh, flows which can be used to describe more complex flows and are uh, satisfying Laplace's equation. These are elementary flows. Uh, uniform flow distribution where flow is directed horizontally. Then the source flow when flow is going from one point to all directions uniformly or sync flow. In uh, opposite direction, we also discussed vortex flow where flow is rotating and the velocity components are known. There is um, angular rotation of flow and the doublet flow, which is combination of source and sink flow. Doublet flow is this type. Yeah. Okay, I will put direction like this, doublet flow. Where flow circulates very similar to distribution of magnetic lines, right? And it's similar, it may be same because magnetic field can be also described by Laplace equation. And then when uh, we described such four elementary flows, we also saw a flow around a cylinder which is combination of uniform and doublet flow. We combine these two, we receive flow around cylinder. And uh, we had a conclusion that this flow around cylinder is having zero value of lift and zero value of drag according to the model. How we can determine these values? Uh, since uh, lift force is um, force created by difference of pressure on the upper and lower side of aerodynamic body. And we see that along axis, this uh, distribution is same on the upper and lower part. It means that there is no lift. Forces are compensated, upper and lower force. And analyzing this uh, vertical plane, we also see a symmetry on the vertical plane. It means that front part uh, forces are uh, same as back part forces. And we have no drag at this case. So it's enough to analyze flow pattern, which is uh, also proportional to the pattern of distribution of pressure on the surface. According to Bernoulli equation, there is a relation. And today we will see another case which is called lifting, lifting flow over cylinder. Flow around cylinder which creates a lift. In such case, we have a cylinder calculated by previous model as a combination of uniform flow and uh, Doublet flow, this formula one uh, is a streamline. Streamline, I would like to remind, remind you that the R radius of cylinder can be always found analytically as a function of infinite velocity and strength of doublet. And we combine this flow, non-lifting non flow over cylinder with the vortex of strength gamma with the simple vortex flow. The equation of streamline also can be seen the center top of my screen. Then once we summate these two equations, we obtain lifting flow over a cylinder. Uh, how it's physically possible? Our cylinder is rotating with known circulation or known uh, velocity of surface. This uh, uh, circulation gamma represents to us 
velocity of cylinder rotation. I would like to remind you that gamma circulation is always can be always expressed as uh, integral of velocity over closed circuit. For example, for uh, this case, we might find uh, uh, integral over the surface of um, V of surface ds like this. Then if we have constant surface velocity, it goes outside of integral and we just need to multiply uh, velocity by the area, uh, sorry, area, the length of um, of circle. <clears throat> if velocity is constant, I can write that V S multiplied by by S or from definition of radius, it's V S P to uh, R. Okay, like this. Yeah, looks correct. So uh, once we introduce circulation in such a way, we can simulate a cylinder which rotates inside the flow with the velocity Vs, we can, uh, which can be any value. And uh, we will receive a picture, which you can see on the right part of figure 32, lifting flow over a cylinder. This picture right here. Uh, picture of uh, streamlines is uh, equivalent to equation which you can see below this C function written also in polar coordinates can be built easily once you once you use uh, two-dimensional or let, let's say uh, two-dimensional function to visualize it's something like contour or contour lines or surface uh, this uh, function can be visualized and we receive flow lines flow lines uh, once we uh, have this streamline function we can make it equal to zero and find condition at which uh, our surface is located so location of surface once r uh, of coordinate is equal to r of uh, of cylinder on this first part of equation and on the second part of equation in such case you can see that the equation will be equal to zero right because uh, oh, no sorry Oh yeah, the uh, equation will be equal to zero because uh, first and second part of it would result in zero value. Uh, analyzing this equation, we can find different flow patterns. Okay, uh, general equation is on the top, and uh, with respect to relation of uh, circulation and infinite velocity and r we can find different flow patterns. For example, when circulation is equal to 4 pi V infinite R, we can see a picture where there is one stagnation point on the bottom of cylinder. Analytically can be found uh, such a flow picture. Okay, and um, flow goes around the cylinder on the top of the cylinder flow is faster on the bottom of the cylinder velocity of flow is smaller okay this is uh, so pressure goes opposite according to Bernoulli equation so we have pressure upper and pressure lower distribution and always we can find that PL would be smaller than P upper lower pressure smaller than upper pressure and uh, because of this we have a lift because of this we have a lift this happens for all these three patterns 
uh, in case of when circulation is smaller than 4 pi v infinite r, we have two stagnation points, position of which could be found analytically. Uh, when we make equal zero streamlined function. And in case when stagnation, uh, sorry, when circulation is bigger than 4 pi v infinite r, we can find uh, also two stagnation points analytically. One stagnation point will be inside flow, outside of cylinder, okay, point four can be seen. And another imaginary solution, imaginary stagnation point can be found inside cylinder, which is, oh, sorry, I will start again presentation, some problem with my program. should appear. It's supposed to appear already. OK, we are stopped. Yeah, two, two uh, stagnation points uh, can be found analytically. Stagna condition of stagnation point is very simple. You need to make uh, uh, flow velocity equal to zero. Since flow velocity is strictly related to to uh, streamline function the following way that uh, okay u component of velocity is dc by dy and v component of velocity is dc by dx uh, also this can be written in uh, polar coordinates uh, sorry it should be divided by right this, there is a formula we saw it in our previous previous lecture probably i can find uh, or we will have it soon uh, so this derivate this derivative of uh, streamlined function can be found since we have it analytical and we can analytically find position of uh, position of these stagnation points making equal zero u and v component of uh, velocity at the same time. Here we have two equations and inside streamline function we have two parameters theta and r. So we have we can find uh, roots corresponding to position of stagnation point. It's quite interesting these three cases because they change a completely flow pattern. For example, increasing the uh, rotation of of cylinder we can have first two stagnation points then making bigger rotation of cylinder we have one stagnation point on the bottom of cylinder these two stagnation points they meet okay they go in the uh, same point and then when we increase more rotation of our cylinder this position of stagnation point goes down of point four and the imaginary solution imaginary stagnation point goes up actually in the middle solution point three there is it's not just one solution there are two solutions but they have same same coordinate okay, there are always two solutions um, since uh, flow has uh, analytical formula it can be analyzed in uh, several ways. For example, we can submit uh, uh, in uh, definition of pressure coefficient and pressure coefficient distribution on surface can be calculated. Uh, you can see it on the lower formula on the screen. Okay. This one here, we see that uh, pressure coefficient will be a function of uh, one parameter. It's uh, theta uh, angle on the, on the circle because uh, radius of circle is R is uh, known right? and on the surface. So we don't have R coordinate here, just one theta parameter, but it can be found in two places inside this formula. The third part of uh, this relation is a uh, 
constant value proportional to rotation of cylinder. Lift can be found as well. Here we will see it very soon since pressure coefficient um, can be calculated. Lift can, and drag also can be calculated analytically. We see that um, according to drag coefficient formula from Anderson book, uh, applying the CP distribution, we will find that drag coefficient is equal to zero. And this is not just a consequence from formula, but we can check it from uh, flow pattern when we again analyze uh, horizontal, uh, sorry, sy symmetry of uh, vertical axis. Okay, when we see this axis here, we see that left and side right of picture are absolutely identical. So flow pattern is identical. It means that pressure distribution is also identical as well as velocity distribution. And it means that uh, force will be compensated on the left and right side. Since drag force is defined as a difference between left and right side of aerodynamic body or front and uh, uh, back side of aerodynamic body, we can find that drag coefficient is zero. This is the main disadvantage of Laplace's equation. We know it from our previous discussion that Laplace's equation, unfortunately, cannot give us any value of drag. Uh, it's not nice, but that's life because Laplace's equation is simple and the uh, uh, source of drag is uh, mostly Viscous drag, which cannot be calculated by Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation serves only for irrotational flow, and the flow with boundary layer with viscosity is rotational, so cannot be used. Here I draw also distribution of pressure for lift and drag calculation. Uh, here uh, for these three cases. Uh, where we have re different relation between circulation and uh, velocity of uh, free stream. Uh, we can see by blue color the negative pressure with respect to ambient pressure. So everything which is blue means that P is smaller than P infinite and the red zone means that Pressure is bigger than P infinite. Okay, I will make here uh, this note. Okay, red zone is positive pressure, let's say, with respect to ambient, and the blue zone is negative with respect to ambient pressure. It doesn't mean uh, negative absolute pressure, it's relatively, right? Relatively smaller than. Uh, ambient pressure because we know that pressure absolute value should always be positive since uh, there is a physical definition of pressure is force uh, defined by force uh, what is next um, uh, relation between these two areas gives us uh, uh, relation between forces we can see that uh, there is a symmetry, like I already explained you, on this vertical plane. There is a symmetry, so no drag force, just even by visualization of pressure distribution can be proven. But there is no symmetry on this horizontal direction. Okay. Uh, flow patterns are different even for case A, where there is a flow of similar but not different. When we have rotation, flow pattern will never be equal because on the upper side we have bigger velocity, on the lower side we have smaller velocity. Uh, so pattern is di different and because of this pressure distribution is different and we have lift. Bigger is a rotation of power cylinder, bigger is this difference. You can see that uh, uh, on second uh, case, case B, 
we have prevailing negative pressure almost everywhere and there is a positive pressure just on the bottom of uh, of picture flow picture it means that flow decelerates starting from this point to this point here in this red zone flow velocity is smaller than ambient velocity in all other regions flow velocity is higher than uh, ambient velocity and very similar we have for case three okay we have these points where it intersects uh, pressure coefficient zero and there is a big red zone huge red zone and very big also blue zone and difference between positive and negative pressure becomes even higher it means that in case three we have biggest possible lift when cylinder rotates faster than in previous cases okay uh, giving you a picture from book i see it's a scanned picture from book uh, showing real flow pattern over cylinder this is uh, i think not a cylinder which does not rotate so flow is uh, almost symmetrical over this uh, horizontal line i will try to make it horizontal sorry uh, there is no ruler here so i try to draw by hand uh, okay flow is not symmetrical because uh, of physics of nature of flow when you increase flow velocity uh, these vortexes they are trying to be asymmetric and they separate periodically and they grow again so uh, in the case which is shown here on the screen probably Reynolds number is so not so big but already significant so this uh, disproportional size of uh, vortexes is already visible we see that for real flow around cylinder flow structure is different from what we saw according to laplace's equation i will just repeat your pattern from laplace's equation which is supposed to be like this okay and we see that in the front part of cylinder uh, flow goes according to laplace's equation to solution of Laplace's equation and in the back part of cylinder it doesn't so in this part here behind we cannot rely on solution of Laplace's equation uh, this is what makes difference between uh, computation and real life it's only some part can be some part of solution can be used efficiently and other part of solution should be discarded and cannot be considered as reliable uh, what else since we know analytically distribution of of streamline function for such cylinder rotating cylinder we can always find analytically force not just pressure coefficient but integrating pressure pressure coefficient uh, we find the uh, lift force analytically Anderson is doing this in uh, in the book integrating step by step I just show you final result uh, that is shown on equation 140 this equation is one of the most important equations in aerodynamics it says to us relation between lift velocity density and circulation this uh, equation we will see soon again it will be called kuta zhukovsky theorem kuta zhukovsky theorem you know one scientist from germany kuta one from russia zhukovsky and their theorem because i think it was invented in the same time independently um, <clears throat> It happened a long time ago, more than 100 years ago. So it's not something new. It's a concept uh, obtained analytically and then proven experimentally, proven numerically. So this uh, theorem relating lift, 
density, velocity, and circulation works not just for cylinder, but it works for any aerodynamic body uh, where we have flow. So this formula serves for any aerodynamic body, for airfoil, for complete airplane, for rocket, but which has flow around with known flow properties, density and velocity. This formula can be used in both directions. For example, if you have a body of complex shape, how you will circulate, uh, cal calculate circulation around this body. You can do it by measuring lift. If you have a lift measured by uh, dynamometer, for example, in aerodynamic tunnel, you know velocity and density, you can calculate easily circulation. So gamma would be equal to lift divided by density and velocity. Just that simple. And this is uh, great because once calculated the circulation, you can use it for other purposes. You can find relation between uh, aerodynamic properties. Of course, circulation is not something dimensionless to calculate for a body of similar, of same shape, but different uh, size. You need to use dimensional analysis, and this we will do a bit later. And we will speak more about Kutazhikovsky theorem again very soon. But now let's go back to our cylinder. Uh, before we had a cylinder which does not rotate, this picture corresponds to cylinder which rotates. Here, uh, it's case A, case one, where we have two stagnation point. One stagnation point, probably I need to make thicker. It was better. One stagnation point and second stagnation point. So you can see that uh, such flow corresponds quite uh, close to a theory. There are at least two stagnation points. Of course, such flow is different uh, with respect to theoretical one described by uh, Laplace's equation, because here we can observe some turbulent structure which disturb flow at the um, second stagnation point. And it's normal because real flow is viscous and real flow has uh, flow separation. And because of these turbulence or uh, vortexes. OK, so we always must understand that uh, calculation by Laplace's equation does not give us a precise exact solution. It's a pre it's a preliminary, maybe uh, not so accurate, but at least some starting point which can be used for analysis of aerodynamic processes. So you can see a big similarity between Laplace's equation and real flow of rotating cylinder. And such cylinder, since it rotates, it has circulation. According to Kutashukovsky's theorem, it also has lift. This lift can be measured and uh, is proven to have such value of uh, vertical force. Of course, such a real rotating cylinder has a drag. Drag will never disappear, even though if uh, Laplace's equation says as there is no drag on real aerodynamic structure, drag exists. And you probably remember that for such a blunt body uh, like cylinder, drag is significant. So lift to drag ratio will not be so favorable for having uh, an efficient flight, let's say. This is why we are not using rotating cylinders instead of airfoils. Uh, same as airfoil, cylinder, this kind of uh, aerodynamic body cylinder can create lift, but relation of lift to drag is not so good to fly. So this is why we have airfoils and wings and no no cylinders rotating on air. It would be very crazy to see airplane with rotating cylinders creating lift. Of course, we will never have it because drug is huge. This one, I think it's um, it's a case when uh, <clears throat> when we have a stagnation point outside. Okay, the third one. 
looks like at least a third case. Here it's shown uh, uh, rotation velocity or relation between peripheral velocity to surface, but doesn't say anything about uh, size of cylinder. So we cannot say uh, definitively by calculation if it's case two or case three, but I think it's more close to case three because it looks like flow is uh, stopping somewhere here in this region not on the surface of uh, of cylinder for me it looks like this old zone here it's having a uh, structure it is difficult not, maybe not this maybe this zone here it's a difficult structure which is difficult to analyze direction of flow visualization of such flow field uh, is shown it's uh, made in water there are aluminum fillings or aluminum uh, uh, particles, and with the long exposition can be tracked this uh, path of aluminum particles. Nowadays, there are uh, machines uh, and acquisition system that make in real time such visualization. So in modern wind tunnel, if we test aerodynamic structure can be made without aluminum particles, but can be made with the laser uh, technology visualize we visualize such a pattern in a very very nice dynamic real time way it's very nice i hope someday we have such an equipment at least in our university or in uh, uh, simple access okay okay uh, please let me know do not forget if some of you have questions, I will open chat now. Uh, Pedro asked a question about Coanda effect. Uh, it's the first time I hear about Coanda effect. There are many things uh, I do not know. And uh, if you present what is this, probably we could have more uh, fruitful discussion. OK, Pedro, so if you are interested to know, please tell me what is this or at least where I could see about this effect. Uh, sorry, I just saw your comment 20 minutes after because uh, I was focused on presentation and not on chat. Uh, about this uh, question of um, of knowledge, what do we know about aerodynamics? Aerodynamics is quite developed science, so we know quite a lot. And there is uh, information which was captured during one century. A lot of information. Unfortunately, most part of it uh, is uh, in still analog form printed or published uh, in some reports. So not so not complete access to all this information right just in the last 10 15 years uh, we have uh, digital access so, but uh, during these 100 years there's a lot of a lot of data and a lot of knowledge collected so this is why i'm telling you that i do not know everything i study by myself uh, every day when i prepare to aerodynamics i try to read and see something new but uh, you know it's a classical uh, situation when you study more you understand that you know less you you discover new things which you do not know and it like grows exponential it's not possible to know everything so when you find something new something interesting uh, please share this information i think if this question is interesting for several people we could make a discussion not uh, probably making part of lecture, but it would be nice to discuss uh, as part of aerodynamics, even though if it's not inside our program of study. So I'm expecting something from you. If you find something good, something nice, we, I will be happy to discuss. And also do not forget that uh, when I write something, I almost do not use any uh, additional material so I can mistake very easily 
pay attention if you see some kind of strange strange part written formula or values let me know i will try to correct and it makes part of our study when you pay attention on what is given okay let's see let's see next part um, uh, analytical analysis of rotating cylinder or of list lifting cylinder Uh, general formula of pressure coefficient, since we can calculate uh, velocity analytically, pressure coefficient also can be calculated, I think we had in previous slide, pressure coefficient distribution formula, let me see, it was, or not, yeah, this one, CP formula, we had before, so analytically we can calculate distribution of pressure and pressure coefficient, we can uh, work with this uh, in order to define some specific points. For example, like shown here, maximum, minimum, minimal, maximum points, uh, stagnation points, uh, zero pressure coefficient corresponding to to infinite pressure. So let's see what's shown here. First of all, point A is stagnation, all these points can be found analytically. So do not forget that these uh, values here, they for their position is different from uh, one case to another, depend on relation between size, uh, infinite velocity and uh, circulation or rotation of cylinder. But all these points, all these angles can be found. This is the most important that we can analyze analytically such cases and can find these specific points uh, and values of pressure and uh, velocity in these points. So point A, stagnation point, where we need uh, to put velocity equal zero and uh, R small equal to R big. So uh, U equals zero, V equals zero. And, uh, and what? Uh, R equal r. So if we put these three conditions in uh, equation of uh, pressure coefficient or in streamline function, we can find exactly position of uh, A. Uh, and there are two solutions, of course, on the left and on the right, absolutely symmetrical position because flow is symmetrical uh, with respect to this vertical plane or vertical line. Uh, then there is point B here and here also symmetrical correspond to uh, zero pressure coefficient and there are four solutions. Okay, these uh, points are uh, where pressure is equal to ambient pressure or CP zero. CP0, and what else? We have point C on the top, always on the top, because it's symmetric flow structure, and it corresponds to minimum value of uh, pressure, and same time it corresponds to maximum velocity, maximum velocity in the system. When velocity of flow summates with the uh, velocity from surrounding, uh, velocity on the wall summates with velocity from surrounding, increasing total velocity. And the uh, minimal velocity, or let's say, no, it's not a minimal velocity because it's not stagnation point, but it's a minimal velocity on the on this region, let's say. It's uh, point D, it's placed on the bottom of cylinder. On the bottom of cylinder, we know pressure, uh, pressure which is equal to pressure infinite minus 0 0.45 dynamic pressure, and we can find corresponding velocity according to Bernoulli equation, all analytically. 
Even though if some analytical solution is not possible, we remember that the equation of flow is uh, very simple, right? Um, algebraic correlation. And if it's difficult to find analytically, always numerical method can give us fast and reliable answer because we know approximate uh, position we put in numerical method and we receive uh, solution, for example, by Newton method. But I hope for most cases we use just analytical solution and find this uh, solution and make a nice picture, nice flow picture. OK, please let me know if you have questions about case of uh, lifting cylinder. And the meanwhile, I can continue and talk about more about Kuta Zhukovsky theorem and generation of lift. Okay. This is a representation of Kuta Zhukovsky theorem in a graphical form, can be used in your aerodynamic body inside, uh, not just airfoil or cylinder, absolutely any aerodynamic body. <clears throat> What does it say? It's uh, uh, there are two volumes we can see here, or a volume which is uh, surrounded by uh, closed circuit A and uh, B. Inside A, we have aerodynamic body which generates lift. Inside B, we have just flow and flow with uh, some flow pattern, of course. Flow goes somewhere, it's not uh, uh, zero velocity. It's flow with some velocity, not important which is the velocity. So what is saying to us uh, theory? It says to us, if we take pattern A with aerodynamic body inside and this body generates lift, then uh, circulation around this closed path would be a value, not zero. And in case B, if we have uh, some volume with no body inside, but with flow inside, when we integrate such velocity, we receive circulation equal to zero. This is how by just uh, calculation, we can say if there is some body generating lift or no. We do not need to know what we have inside. We just need a, a path and we can integrate velocity and we can obtain circulation or not obtain. If we obtain circulation, there is definitively body inside with lift generation. And if there is zero, there are possible two cases or body is symmetric and flow is uh, symmetric lift is not generated, uh, or there is nothing inside. Okay, this is, uh, I think it's Kelvin's theorem. Uh, next, uh, we will talk about application of uh, elementary flows to calculation of uh, aerodynamic properties inside, uh, inside flow with airfoil. The simplest one is called numerical source panel method. It's a numerical method which where we put geometry of airfoil or at least some characteristics of airfoil and uh, we obtain flow structure around this airfoil. This is a predecessor of numerical uh, simulation or CFD simulation. I already see Pedro post uh, link, so we will go there. We can go there and uh, see video next time we could discuss this this case. Mm. So let's see what is this method predecessor of CFD simulation. This method is widely used nowadays. For example, in different softwares like XFOIL software to obtain flow around uh, airfoil and to 
calculate flow properties and characteristics. The simplest one is uh, based on source. This is why it's a numerical source panel method. It's, uh, it uses source flow as the base. And after we discuss this method, its advantages and disadvantages, we will see also next generation of this method, which uses uh, vortex, vortex panel, panel method, not source panel method. So what is the approach? Approach is the following. Now we have uh, not a source of point, one point of source, but we have a line of source. Idea is absolutely the same as we had for point, but now we extend it to line. We have a line starting from A finishing at B. Along this line, we have distribution of source of flow. Now our uh, uh, source is characterized not by land capital, but is characterized by distribution of land. And the relation between them is integral from A to B of land S D S like this. So source which we had before point source can be equivalent to line source, but line source is distributed in space, source distributed in space along the line. And this line, I think you understand already, this line can be something similar to shape of airfoil. Uh, then uh, analytically, potential function, or at least differential of potential function can be calculated very similarly to potential function on uh, point source. Okay. And uh, application of this source method is this. We have airfoil with source distributed, source of flow distributed on this airfoil. We combine it with uniform flow. As a result, when we summate, we receive flow over the body of a given shape uh, and flow goes around this shape. How, why it happens? Because flow of source interacts with uniform flow. So flow of source prevents that flow uh, crosses the edge of uh, airfoil. It creates such a strength in each point that resists entrance of uh, external flow inside airfoil. So our task in this uh, uh, type of, in this method, is to find a lambda distribution which corresponds to this uh, uh, purpose. Prevent uh, that flow from outside enters inside the shape of known uh, profile. Since computationally we do not have any physical body, we need to calculate what should be distribution of strength of source to prevent this process. So amount of uh, gas which passes from entrance to exit would be absolutely, absolutely same. Nothing will be generated or consumed by this source. So source just resists to flow enter inside and it forms uh, such a shape, such a shape of streamline. And we know that theoretically flow cannot cross streamline. So purpose of this source is to create such shape of streamline that repeats shape of airfoil. Uh, there is one problem in this uh, old story that, uh, OK, we could calculate analytically, but we cannot calculate uh, because shape of any airfoil cannot be described as simple analytical function. It's a complex shape. Usually it's uh, a, it's a 
composed by from different polynom or polynomial functions and cannot be calculated analytically. So this is why we need to transform such such a method from uh, continuous calculation or analytical cal calculation to discrete calculation or calculation by numerical method. This is the uh, basis of this numerical method. Just give me a moment, I will take some water and uh, I continue. And meanwhile, please ask your questions if you have. Okay, I'm here again. We continue with our panel method, source panel method. Please do not be afraid about this method. I'm not giving any kind of uh, homework to calculate at home or to deliver as a report. I think it's important to know idea of this method because many people nowadays use uh, XFOIL or similar softwares to calculate distribution of flow parameters around uh, airfoils and wings, and at least you need to know basics of such calculation method. OK. Uh, the idea of this method is to avoid that flow passes through surface of airfoil. Here you can see if airfoil exaggerated, of course, thickness is too, too big. But uh, idea can be better visualized in such a way. Uh, how we can prevent flow going through the surface? In the following way, we create a number of panels. It's, it can be a big number of panels. Uh, each panel is, is a line of known size. Okay. All sizes can be different, but uh, each size is known. And we, instead of preventing flow passing through all uh, surface, we prevent flow passing through single panel. And then we repeat this process for all panels. So in such a way, we guarantee that flow will not go outside or inside through the panel. Since panel is uh, linear, is uh, having very simple geometry. It simplifies a lot calculation. We know size, as I told you, and we consider that distribution of, of properties on each panel is uh, equal. So uniform, for example, uh, as a reference point, we always take center of panel 
and on the center of panel we define define properties and we assume that for all panels uh, for all the panel properties are constant okay let's take one of them oh another another um, Another comment about this is that each panel generates its um, value of source. For example, this panel two, where I already put my point, is generating source of known, or not, not known, maybe a source of um, some strengths, right? Next panel also generating different strengths. Initially, we don't know these values of uh, strengths lambda, but when we close equation system, number of unknown will be equal to number of equations, and uh, the only unknown will be lambda. So we can calculate strengths of source required to compensate flow and to stop flow uh, passing through the surface. Main condition of uh, this flow not passing through the surface is shown right here. It's uh, Vn infinite plus Vn is equal to zero. N is normal component, and it says to us that velocity normal component that comes from infinite distance, this first one, Vn infinite, velocity normal component that comes from infinite distance should be compensated by normal component of velocity generated by panels. Just that simple. Uh, you know, any physical or computational uh, uh, process in aerodynamics or physics, we can say by words. Here is same. Velocity generated is compensated by velocity that comes from ambient flow. When these two vectors of velocity are equal but opposite, total will be zero. And we are talking just about normal component of velocity because tangential component of velocity always will exist and it uh, will not enter inside the panel. It will go just uh, tangential. For example, I draw you. Like here, okay, this VT, which we do not calculate, this VT we will obtain after calculation. But we need to guarantee that normal component of velocity is compensated by source. This is Vn infinite. Oh, I already have somewhere this Vn infinite. <laughs> no. And uh, Vn on the opposite side. Okay, let's assume they have same value, the same size, normal. So that simple concept that we need just to compensate normal component of velocity on each panel is giving to us answer what should be the equation system. Let's see this equation system. Uh, first, okay, I will remove some part. I don't want to, to have all these marks here. First, what is normal component of velocity which uh, comes from uh, free stream direction? It's uh, just a component of velocity which it can be projected from infinity. It's here, V infinite multiplied by cosine of beta. Beta is the angle between free stream direction here and uh, normal com normal component of velocity for each panel it's different but is known from uh, uh, known angle of attack and known direction of panel so beta i is a constant and v infinite is also constant it means that all this uh, part of equation is just a value is not a parameter, just a value. Then inside this equation, we have two parts. This uh, parameter here is this Vn. This Vn is having two parts. Part one, where lambda divided by two. 
is velocity generated by this panel. Okay, this panel, this particular panel, which we for which we are writing this equation. And the second part of this equation is this big is a sum of lambda j, j uh, divided by two pi multiplied by i i j is a total of uh, normal components of velocity generated by all other panels. Why we need to take into account all other panels? Because of one reason. If I, for example, have flow here on uh, on the bottom, I generate my velocity by this source, by this panel, exactly by this panel. I need to remember that all other panels are also generating and also contribute to velocity. For example, if I generate something on a panel which is nearby, definitely, okay, this uh, source will impact on velocity distribution on next panel, okay? Same thing for other panels. I generate something on next panel, and this uh, velocity change also impact on the on uh, normal component of velocity on this panel. All influence on all. This is very typical uh, process in uh, subsonic and incompressible flow. In subsonic flow, distribution on, of uh, properties or let's say disturbances go in all directions because disturbances go with the uh, speed of sound. Velocity is smaller of flow in, than speed of sound. It means that disturbance can go in any direction. Of course, disturbance becomes smaller and smaller and smaller when distance is bigger. Okay, so uh, mostly influencing uh, panels are nearby panels to this central panel. But even the most distant panel will influence to to this uh, particular panel. So all panel influence all on panel. And uh, the central part of equation where I have some, I have, uh, I'm taking into account influence from other panels to my current panel, which I'm calculating. Okay, uh, inside this equation, we have lambda, which is strength of uh, each panel of other panels, okay, each of them. And I have integral i, which describes this distance relation. Here is not given, and is also not given in Anderson book. This i integral is calculated in a some way that uh, takes into account distance between panels like this uh, R i j, where we calculate distance between uh, two panels, centers of two panels. Okay, but since uh, inside Anderson book is not given, I'm not, uh, I'm not showing you as well. I think that probably this integral. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember now. This integral i a i j is uh, this integral here. So I will make. Uh, Maybe like this. Okay, this arrow. So this i parameter is uh, that integral which is shown on the top of my screen. Probably you understand that this integral is something that should be calculated numerically. That right? is also a number. In the depends only on uh, geometry. It Inside integral, we have just geometrical quantities, R and uh, S. If we want to calculate it numerically, we just multiply one by another, R, uh, logarithm of R by S, by size of panel, and then we receive this coefficient. Uh, longer is distance, coefficient is bigger probably, right? Looks like at least. But okay, no matter. We have a software like XQL where all this um, equation is integrated inside. Uh, 
so we build number of uh, same equations as you can see on the bottom of the screen as uh, number of panels minus one because the, it should be one uh, equation that makes a balance between all panels we know that mass flow rate cannot be generated right according to continuity equation amount of mass which enters inside system should exit inside uh, outside system with no change so we need to have mass balance and the equation shown on the top right corner is a mass balance equation mass balance equation it says to us that generated totally generated uh, source is equal to zero. Some, so some source panels are positive, some source panels are negative. Here we see uh, sum of product of uh, strengths of each panel multiplied by size of each panel. In such a way, we calculate total mass uh, generated by profile and it's zero because usually airfoils do not produce mass. Airfoil just organize flow around itself. I know this theory looks uh, heavy. I recommend you to read this part of book with attention. Maybe it will be more clear when you read inside book. Uh, again, I will not ask you to calculate anything according to this model, but you need to know how this model works. So on uh, oral test, I will ask something about panel method, numerical panel method. This numerical panel method, for my opinion, is simple because it has just a system of algebraic equations, unknown lambda here. I will remove my notes. You can see it clearly that this equation, it has just, uh, it's a just linear algebraic equation, first order system of equations right it has just lambda which is unknown so it's um, it's a matrix can be solved if a small number of panels analytically if the number of panels is big numerically convergence is quite good and it's a classical equation system which uh, has no difficulty to be solved by iterative iterative method what does it give to us in a practical way we for example can uh, use it to calculate airfoil or flow around airfoil we can use it to calculate flow flow around a cylinder circular cylinder for example here uh, we see compared analytical calculation and the uh, numerical result of course analytical calculation are just few points few characteristic points and the uh, numerical result is much more precise you can choose any number of points you want right by distributing cylinder or, or dividing cylinder in many points we can find a very fine distribution of uh, flow property like pressure coefficient here Let's see one disadvantage. One disadvantage of this is uh, not completely correct. It's not completely correct. As you remember already, here on the back side of cylinder, pressure distribution is different. But in uh, analytical or numerical simulation, pressure distribution is this. So we can rely on the front part of cylinder good we can rely on uh, upper and lower part of front part of cylinder but we cannot rely on back part of cylinder where angle is more than pi divided by two or minus pi divided by two in the middle nothing good because we have flow separation we have turbulence we have vortexes rotating behind and this method does not calculate but in front part of cylinder of course we can use numerical method or analytical method as well 
Uh, and uh, finishing today, I, uh, I will talk about flow over cylinder reel. So we can compare actually why we need experiment, why we still need experiments. So here, uh, one of the reasons is the drug coefficient. Cylinder drug coefficient cannot be calculated analytically or by uh, panel method, right? Because flow pattern is symmetric, and because of this, we cannot have any drug. Drug here is uh, given by experimental experimental research, and there are different experimental research. You can see there are crosses, right? there are crosses, there are circles. Also, there are squares, and we may find also triangles. It means that there were different research, not one research, different tests. Each point corresponds to one test in aerodynamic tunnel. So you can imagine how many tests are performed in aerodynamic tunnel to obtain such a curve. It's a huge work, very interesting work, very nice and a big amount of work, right? And there is a not so uh, clear sometimes the value, because if we zoom some part, we see very different values for same value of Reynolds number, very different Reynolds uh, values of uh, result of drug coefficient, or where different uh, test conditions or a bit different uh, tunnel or something, that uh, has to be accounted in uh, error, global error of calculation. Right? When we do experiment, we must also consider that there is error associated with experiment. And there are transitions. For example, transition from laminar to turbulent flow, and sometimes all depend on many, many factors and transition zone creates also uncertainties. For example, transition zone here, we see that there is a difference between test data, test results, especially here in this transition zone also. Not so uh, similar data because process of uh, generation of drug uh, correlated with the uh, viscous flow is not that simple. OK. I hope you already found very reliable data on your airfoil. Real flow around cylinder depends on Reynolds number. For very small Reynolds number, how much can be this small? One, for example, Reynolds equal one. We can see flow picture, see very similar to solution of Laplace's equation. Very, very similar. In such case, uh, slow, laminar, uh, super low velocity flows, which usually can happen in uh, highly viscous liquids. Uh, there, in such flows, drug will be uh, so small that sometimes undetectable. So flow pattern will be extremely symmetric. When we increase Reynolds number, for example, we have Reynolds 10, 20. We have case B, where two, uh, uh, or say one vortex or two vortexes, depend on if it's a two-dimensional structure, two vortexes are generated. And these vortexes will grow according to increase of intensity. Also will grow according to increase of Reynolds number, according to increase of velocity or decrease of uh, viscosity. When the Reynolds number becomes higher, uh, it, these vortexes start to separate and they separate uh, uh, periodically creating such a structure as we can see here. Uh, typical value for Reynolds number is 140 for this case. 
140. So if you would like to simulate such picture in ANSYS Fluent, you can do it easily. Just uh, calculate flow velocity with respect to size of your cylinder and you will obtain such a picture. Of course, you need to use some turbulence model. Okay, to or viscous model. In, in this flow, I think will not give you very good result. Okay, <clears throat> so this is Reynolds uh, similar to one. This is Reynolds similar to, to 10. Oh, okay. I will put not that, I'll put 14 just to be sure that uh, we have not case A yet. And uh, case D and E are extremely high Reynolds. It can be thousands, it can be millions. Reynolds in order of 10 powered by 3, 10 powered by 8. So it's a huge range. But in this range, we already have highly turbulent flow. Okay. Difficult to say at which Reynolds starts this uh, process. I think it depends a lot on other uh, other parameters like initial turbulence and in the flow, uh, quality of surface of cylinder, uh, temperature. So can be other other conditions can influence. And if we are talking about real real testing. Also, parameters in wind tunnel and uh, there is always a relation between tunnel, wind tunnel, and uh, body because flow is subsonic. As you remember, I told you today, everything influences on everything in subsonic flow. So this also connected to a cylinder that walls of a wind tunnel will influence on. Uh, flow pattern on the cylinder. So here, difficult to say which exactly Reynolds is um, critical to transform to purely turbulent flow. Such uh, experiments or such estimations are published in the literature. For several cases, we can discover them. You can see, but it should be thousands, tens of thousands, something like this. Ah, oh, okay, Reynolds. Small, close to Laplace's equation, Reynolds 1.5. Then we increase Reynolds, Reynolds 26, already with two vortexes behind. Then Reynolds 140, Karman wave. Uh, these um, pictures, these all these pictures I took from uh, from a fluid motion book or album of fluid motion. Take a look in internet. This Van Dyke Milton uh, book is uh, very nice. It's one of the best, one of the best albums of fluid motion you can find. It's sometimes very useful when we simulate and expect some flow structure, so we can simulate known flow stru known structure and obtain. Uh, flow pattern similar to this album. There are hundreds of photos, different cases, subsonic, supersonic, flow separations, visualizations in very, very nice way. It's probably the best for all times album of fluid motion. I recommend you to download. It's free and you can at least enjoy looking different flow patterns. It's uh, it looks very nice, very nice. I like a lot. Okay, and here I had video. I think uh, simulation of uh, Karman wave with the vorticity magnitude. Sorry, this video that will not appear today because it's just um, just a note, right? PDF. Okay. Difference between cylinder calculation and simulation. That is what I told you before. Theoretical is giving to us overestimation of CP. And uh, real flow around cylinder can be different depending on uh, uh, type of flow and flow conditions. Can be subcritical, can be supercritical. Uh, I think it's uh, related to a level of turbulence. We see, we see the Reynolds number for subcritical and supercritical different Reynolds values. 
Okay, that's the end of part three. In part four, we will see other numerical methods, uh, more advanced methods allowing us to calculate lift over aerodynamic bodies using Laplace's equation that involves uh, vortex panel method, similar to panel method we saw today, but applied vortexes and uh, with a bit more modified computational approach. Okay, guys, let me know if you have questions. I can wait. And uh, if someone writing question, meanwhile, I can tell you. You ask me uh, to send the deadline. Oh, please tell me. I have no questions. Ah, no questions. No need to tell if you have no questions. But thank you for informing. I prefer to answer questions than to be happy than to be happy with no questions. I'm not happy with no questions. But OK, uh, many people ask to extend two days, three days uh, deadline for work one. It's absolutely not a problem. I already expected it because all previous semesters, all previous years, students always ask to extend a few days, one day, two days. It's normal. And it's independent on deadline. You know, if I put one more week, initially people always ask, ah, can you extend more one day, two days? If I put one week less, people still ask to extend one or two days. So it's independent on initial date, absolutely. And uh, I, I have no problem with this. You can have uh, time until end of the week you can deliver. I will not change inside system, but uh, I will not consider delay of one or two days as something significant, uh, significant at all. So you can work this weekend. Uh, so about this, uh, we have an, another uh, schedule, let's say schedule for tomorrow, since you ask more time, uh, I would like to see if will appear some questions about work one and I could answer tomorrow. If not, you can work with the material which I already left on. Uh, on website. Uh, with videos answering question about calculation or formatting videos of or videos about formatting of uh, report one. Or for people who already deliver work one, you can start watching video about work doing work two, simulation of airfoil geometry. Let's do like this. I will expect your questions in uh, form or in uh, chat in WhatsApp. If you find if you uh, ask questions, I explain. No need to everyone to participate. Tomorrow I will not uh, require participation of everyone. So only people who ask question can participate. I answer. So we can work in this way. So I give to people who, who need time. Same time uh, of our lecture, you can use preparing your report. Okay, so let's have it. So I see no question in chat. I think we could finish for today. And um, thank you for participation today. We meet uh, for continuing our lectures next Tuesday. We start uh, chapter four of Anderson. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye, Professor. Bye, Professor. Bye. Bye. Bye, Professor. Bye. Bye, professor. Bye.